before we begin, I would uh, invite you to stand and join me in the pledge, and then Randall Harriman will bring the invocation. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Let's pray. Lord God in heaven, we thank you for all your blessings, Lord. We thank you for the blessings you give to our community. Thank you for the leaders that look to you for guidance, Lord. Please help us to make decisions tonight that are good for our community and that we're good stewards of, of our resources, Lord. In Christ's name, amen. Amen. Thank you, Randall. All right. I'll call to order this uh, regular meeting of Springdale City Council. Okay, we've got Kevin on Zoom. All right. Um, large print of agendas are available over here. Wyman's got them. If anybody in the room would like to uh, have one of those. And I'll ask our city clerk to call the roll. Mayor Sprouse. Here. Brian Powell. Here. Amelia Williams. <clears throat> Jeff Watson. Here. Mike Overton. Mike Lawson. Here. Kevin Flores. Here. Harriman. Here. Mark Fujirus. Here. And Ernest Cape. Here. All right. Uh, item four on the agenda is the uh, section of each each uh, council meeting that our city council sets aside to hear comments from our citizens. If we have any citizens that would like to address the council concerning an item that is not already on tonight's agenda, you're welcome to come at this time. Please, uh, I didn't go through my whole spiel. Please state your name and address, and please keep your comments brief. Okay. Okay. Um, my name is Cindy Lee, and my address is 1601 West Emma Avenue. I'm on the corner of West End and Emma. Okay. Um, I've lived in Springfield now for about four years, or Springdale. Um, I've just noticed a lot of loud cars, like their exhaust systems are being modified right. or... And I'm just wondering, has that ever been looked into? Will it ever be looked into? Well, we do have we do have an ordinance. And it <clears throat> now seems catching them is something else. So, and I know I know people that have been stopped for loud pipes, but I don't know how often that happens. I don't know. Uh, is Chief here? Would he like to address that? Oh, Lester Coger, Captain Coger. So, uh, come on up. Come on up, with Mike Lester. Right here. So uh, I'm Captain Lester Coe with the police department and uh, and I do understand your concern. There is an ordinance against that and like the mayor said trying to be in your police car with your in the right place and the right time to find it and then stop them and then you got to then there's there's decimal readings with how loud how loud loud their pipes are. Um, so we do enforce it. I, I can bring that to the chief and then we can get that to our patrol captain and he'll disperse that among our officers and particularly uh, your location. You know, if they've got an area of responsibility, they can actually sit in a location if well, you let us know where that is. to the corner of Emma and West End, um, okay. they're, they're, it's intolerable, the noise okay. level. So they're race, they're, okay. what are they doing? They're, they're drag racing. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Is there any possibility that that stop sign on West End going through could be removed? Just make that a two-way stop where they wouldn't be accelerating away from that intersection. That's not a through street anymore. You know, you've blocked off Emma at the right. high school. Uh, so if there's any possibility of that, that would be really a, a That big would be something there. our traffic committee could consider. I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't hold out a lot of hope for that, but it may be something, it would be something they could consider and you would be welcome to come to a traffic committee meeting. Uh, Brad, do they, who do they need to contact to get on the agenda? They could probably contact our office and get on the agenda, right? It's the first Wednesday of every month at one, one or one thirty. Anyway, we can give you that information. If you'll call my office, we can get you on the agenda if you'd like to present this before the traffic committee okay, okay. so they could they could discuss it okay all right thank you very much um, all right. so 
Do you think this will be addressed by the police department? It, I, I guarantee it will be. I, I will put out a directive and we'll extra patrol the area. And then one the, day I counted uh, just one day, uh, 59 cars with far too loud exhaust systems. Okay. It's ridiculous. Yeah. We'll, it's put, in, we'll it's, put an officer on there. We have designated traffic officers too, and that's what they do. So, so we'll either put a zone officer or a traffic officer there and wash that for what you. What would be the best way for me to really get this looked into? I mean, well, petitions uh, or? I can meet with you out here and I can give you my information and my email address and then you'd have a direct contact number one with the command staff of the police department. Okay. And then we'll just work with you and, and hopefully, you know, to a place where you're satisfied with that. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Les. Thanks. Okay. Uh, any uh, anyone else? An item that's not on tonight's agenda. Uh, Mayor Mayor Sprouse. The um, yes, Kevin. The the, the chamber screen's not coming up. It's just a, a blank city council page. Can I uh, get that fixed, please? The oh the the our chamber. Okay. Well, uh, in, any video showing yeah, show uh, the chamber. Those on Zoom can't see the room. Can we fix that? Well, there's a map. <laughs> now you're seeing what we're seeing, at least. Hey, what, Scott, why don't you come on up while IT's working on that. <coughs> Kevin, I'm asking Scott Edmondson from the chamber to come up and give their quarterly report. Thank you, Mayor Sprouse. Uh, I left each one of you a copy of the uh, first quarter economic development report. It's quite a busy quarter, and uh, under our projects, uh, the, uh, the chamber, we work very closely with our public facilities board, and uh, we recently closed on a 12-acre land sale. Uh, on Angel Drive for a new company coming to town and um, hopefully there'll be some things in the next month or two that coming forward city planning for some large-scale developments on that but hopefully that project will create uh, 40 to 50 jobs uh, we do have a, uh, a land sale that's pending that hopefully will close it, hopefully later this week uh, for a lot on Turnbow Avenue for an existing company in Springdale. It's going to help keep them in town and then also give them room for expansion uh, for another product line. And then uh, the steel yard, that, that land sale actually occurred. It's seven acres over on Mountain Road, and that actually occurred in late December. Uh, we had a groundbreaking actually scheduled for tomorrow, but with the weather, we've moved that to a week from uh, a uh, week from tomorrow, and you'll receive a notification of that and an invitation uh, to attend that groundbreaking. Working with a couple other companies that are looking at possible expansions and, and uh, the uh, possibility of some Economic Development Commission incentive monies to help uh, assist with the cost of those. Uh, if you see our new job numbers, uh, according to Department of Workforce Services, the end of February, we had 38,665 people employed in Springdale, and that's only 300. 33 shy of our pre-pandemic levels last year, last February of 38,998. So we're making our way back from uh, pre-pandemic levels uh, in our in our job numbers. Sales tax remain strong. The um, the March numbers as a 24 percent increase over March of 2020, and in fact, that was the 19th consecutive month for Springdale that the sales tax showed an increase over the same month the previous year and the last time it showed a decrease was back in june of 19. so our sales tax numbers are very strong uh, also on construction permits i just want to note the total there of construction permits in the first quarter of 2021 uh, commercial permits exceeded that of uh, the first quarter of uh, of 2020. so it looks like things are going pretty well and uh, coming out of the pandemic our our numbers seem to be be very favorable um did increase include an update on some of the projects that are going on and some things that are scheduled to start hopefully in the next in the next few weeks or in the next month or so so uh, uh but if there's any questions i'd be happy to try to answer them so. anyone were those lane sales were those the 
public facility board sales? Yes, those were the, those properties, the seven acre tract on Mountain Road, the 12th, and then the Turnbow Avenue lot, those are all three properties that are owned by the public facilities board. Mm -hmm. so. Is that, do those sales go towards the park that we're, the uh, money to the park or is this something one, different? One of them, I, I'm not sure, they may have been previous to the, but you, that was supposed to, that actually kicked in once you paid off the other once we paid off the, the bond, there was a bond issue okay. that the facilities board had, uh, bond debt on the Kendrick Avenue property when we purchased it in December of 2015, and the 12-acre sale helped pay that off. Okay. So uh, that debt has now been retired. So moving forward, some of these will help go to the commitment that the facilities board made to the city. Awesome. Right. So, all right. Okay. Any other questions for Scott? Anyone? <coughs> Okay. Thank you, Scott. Thank you. Do we have numbers yet on um, census for Springdale? No, we won't get the state numbers. You know, the the numbers for the states were released yesterday, I think. But individual cities within states won't be released until probably August or September. Is that what we're hearing, Colby? Yeah, Mayor, they said in August they'll have individual cities and towns. There is an estimate from 2019 that came out recently and it had us over 81,000, and that's not factoring in uh, the town formerly known as Bethel Heights, uh, or our growth since then either. Yeah, yeah. We're, we hope, we're hopeful we got a good count, so, but we, we won't know for sure till August. All right. Uh, Council, you've had uh, access to the minutes. Hopefully you've had an opportunity to look over those. If there are no questions or additions, I'd entertain a motion to approve them as presented. So moved. Second. Second. We have a motion to second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 All, all opposed, same sign. All right. Item seven, procedural motions. What is your pleasure, counsel? I move for A and B. Second. Okay, we have a motion to second to approve, uh, approve both A and B. Roll call, please. Al? Yes. Williams? Yes. Watson? Yes. Lawson? Yes, ma'am. Flores? Yes, ma'am. Harriman? Yes. Fujerus? Yes. Carry seven zero. <clears throat> All right, thank you. Item eight, planning commission report and recommendations by Patsy Christie, director of planning and community development. Patsy? Can we get my PowerPoint back up, guys? Okay, he's working on it. The first item is a request to rezone one acre of property located at 2259 East Highway 264. The request is to rezone the property from Agricultural District A1 to Low Density Single Family Residential District SF1. Planning Commission recommends approval of this rezoning request. The title of the ordinance reads, an ordinance amending ordinance number 3307, the same being the zoning ordinance of the City of Springdale, Arkansas, and the plat pertaining thereto by rezoning certain lands from Agricultural District A1 to single family residential district SF1 and declaring an emergency. With the ordinance passed. Second. Okay, we have a motion a second to approve the ordinance. Any other questions or comments? Anyone on Zoom or, or in the in the room with us need to comment? All right, Denise. Williams. Yes. Watson. Yes. Austin. Yes, ma'am. Flores. Yes, ma'am. Harriman. Yes. Fujerus. Yes, ma'am. Powell. Yes. <clears throat> Will the merchant clause be adopted? Second. Watson. Yes. Austin. Yes, ma'am. Flores. Yes, ma'am. Harriman. Yes. Fujerus. Yes. Powell. Yes. Williams. Yes. Both the ordinance emergency clause carry seven zero. The next request is to rezone 2.41 acres located at 611 East Apple Blossom Avenue. The request is to rezone the property from General Commercial District C2 to Light Industrial District I1. Planning Commission recommends approval of this rezoning request. The title of the ordinance reads, an ordinance amending ordinance number 3307, the same being the zoning ordinance of the City of Springville, Arkansas, and the plat pertaining thereto by rezoning certain lands from General Commercial District C2 to Light Industrial District I1 and declaring an emergency. Okay. 
capacity, just a clarification, that's that's bringing it into the same zoning as it's right beside it, adjacent to it. Correct, and okay. it is part of a large scale that was approved with the uh, understanding that that little piece had to be rezoned to I-1 before it moves forward. There's an existing building that was a business or an industry that was approved while it was in Bethel Heights, and this is the second phase of their development, and this is just to bring that entire, that little piece into the I-1. The C2 remains just as it is today. Move the ordinance be adopted. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second to approve. Any other comments or questions? <coughs> Anyone else in the room? All right, Denise. Lawson. Yes, ma'am. Flores. Yes, ma'am. Harriman. Yes. Fujiruz. Yes. Powell. Yes. Williams. Yes. Watson. Yes. Would the merch clause be adopted? Second. Flores? Yes, ma'am. Harriman? Yes. Fujiruz? Yes. Powell? Yes. Williams? Yes. Watson? Yes. Lawson? Yes, ma'am. Both the ordinance emergency clause carry 7 0. The next item is a request to rezone 22 acres located at 1415, 1307, and 1309. Oak Grove Road, as you'll see, at several properties have been put together. The request is to rezone this property from Agricultural District A1 to Medium High Density Multifamily Residential District MF16. Planning Commission recommends approval of this rezoning request. The title of the ordinance reads an ordinance amending ordinance number 3307, the same being the zoning ordinance of the City of Springfield, Arkansas, on the plat pertaining thereto, by rezoning certain lands from Agricultural District A1 to Medium High Density Multifamily Residential District. MF-16 and declaring an emergency. Was there any uh, opposition to this from the community? I don't think so. And it was a unanimous vote by the Planning Commission. Where were your Planning Commission signs placed on that property? Do you know? Is it, uh, doesn't it front two different roads? I think it's indicated right here. Yeah, Jeff, that, there, what are the two red dots on the map? Are the those sign placements? Yeah. Probably our sign locations because we have Public a, hearing sign location. Yeah, you're yeah. right. Okay, so there's one on both roads. Yes, we try to put several up there too. signs out. Sometimes we put even three a little less. so that everybody gets an idea if the, the properties are put together. So. Okay. Because it has an Oak Grove address, but it's also on 48th Street. Correct. Okay. Other questions? Do we have anybody in the room or on Zoom that would like to speak to this before we vote? Okay, I'm not seeing any. Hmm. Oh, we don't have a motion. I move the ordinance be adopted. Second. All right. Thank you. One last chance. Okay. Denise? Harriman? Yes. Fujiruz? Yes. Powell? Yes. Williams? Yes. Watson? Yes. Lawson? Yes, ma'am. Flores? Yes, ma'am. Move the merge clause bid up. Second. Fujiruz? Yes. Powell? Yes. Williams? Yes. Watson? Yes. Lawson? Yes, ma'am. Flores? Yes, ma'am. Harriman? Yes. And again, these emergency clauses are for transactions. Oh, yes, I'm sorry, I forgot to say that. Emergency clauses are included because there are pending transactions on these pieces of property. Sorry, I usually say that after the first one and I got distracted. I want to thank Jeff for asking that question because I learned something just now. I try to teach you something every <laughs> once in a while. Signs on. Very 7 0. Now, I can't guarantee this sign stays there the whole time, but we can guarantee it was put up at that time. Somebody signs for it. Um, the next item on the agenda is a revision to the PUD that is at Magnolia Gardens. Um, and go back a little bit of history and let you know that this was approved back in 2002 for Bill and Carol Kendrick. It was set up for a bed and breakfast and some things like that. And over the years, it has changed. It was sold to downtown uh, Springdale Development in 2000 and I got, a, I got a note here. 2018 is when the ownership changed. The PUD changed with it. 
they came back and asked it to be revised one time. Since then, if you'll remember, they put some TPs in there for, mm -hmm. for um, camping and added some other things to it. What they're coming back now is asking to propose to bring the um, building back to operate as an Air Airbnb as it was originally established. It's been shut down for quite some time and to include a permanent coffee shop and a small restaurant using the commercial kitchen and the dining space within the guest house. They intend to provide breakfast and lunch to the open public accessible from the Greenway access gate, indoor capacity seating between 30 to 35 people, and the intended use of the patio space is to, um, <coughs> and grounds for additional outdoor dining and coffee service. Uh, the tenant has updated the property's retail food permit with the state and county and also has met standards for businesses permitting for the city of Springdale. In addition, they want to improve the gateway, the greenway access. They want to repair the gate that's there and um, make it available uh, so during operating hours. They will open it and close it at operating hours and they will have a new sign there a non-lit uh, aluminum sign that will say Natural State Rock and Republic, which is the um, people that are uh, operating the location and they will be, the name of the restaurant will be determined, but it will have access from the Greenway. They also are proposing to take the right wing of the Red Barn as a guest bike storage and a mechanic service bay to repair the bikes. The tenant plans to run a small bike rental business from this space as of spring of 2022. The service will also be accessible from the Greenway entrance. <coughs> and they, in the um, chapel or the entertainment venue that was built there, they intend to use the space for a cycling studio equipped with bike fitting services and a spin studio. There are no major alterations to any of the buildings or anything on the site, so that's their proposed amendment to the uh, PUD itself. The Planning Commission reviewed this and recommends approval. The title of the ordinance reads, an ordinance amending ordinance number 3307, the same being the zoning ordinance of the City of Springdale, Arkansas, on the plat pertaining thereto, by rezoning, rezoning certain lands, planned unit development, PUD, to revise planned unit development, PUD, to and declaring an emergency, as the things that I just stated will be what has changed. Let, let me go back just a minute. You said, uh, as you were reading, I think I heard it right, you said breakfast and lunch? Breakfast and lunch. Okay. Yes. Would they have, and, and that's for the for the public, uh, right. outside the... Yes. I, I, breakfast I and lunch services to be open to the public, accessible okay. from the Greenway. So if they ever decided, and I don't know that they ever would, but if they ever decided to serve dinner, would they need to come back and amend their PUD? No, because they could do that before. Okay, so this that's not a condition. Breakfast and lunch was something open to the public that they didn't have before. Okay, okay. Thank you. So you all these changes and accesses to the Greenway would require a permit, right? And so it had come before the Planning Commission? It's already there. The, build, the bridge to this was built when the Greenway was built, and the Kendricks had the gate across that and controlled who could come in and out. They're just opening it to the public during the time when they're open now as opposed to when it was open previously. So will they have to come before the Planning Commission on any alterations that they're doing that you mentioned on your... No, everything in here is already taken care of. That's all the changes that is being made to the PUD. That will let them operate with what the business they are proposing to use at this location. And they bring cyclists from all over the country into this and they do guided rides and training. You can take your bike over there and have it fit for you to use and all kinds of training for bicycling in the, in the region, right on the Greenway too. You said this was downtown, you said Springdale Downtown LLC. Is that Downtown Springdale Alliance? You said no. Downtown Springdale No, this Bellary. is a private owner. This is not okay. Downtown Springdale Alliance. Now they do, Downtown Springdale Alliance has an office, office in the building there. that right. used to be the counseling center, but they have okay. an office there. But no, they're not the owner. It's, it's a different entity. Correct. So, um, the picture, and I think maybe it's on page 28 of our packet, it's a little bit different than what's on the screen in that it shows a shaded area. Okay. Familiar with that picture? Yeah, that part of that that's in the floodplain? No, I think it, I'm just talking about the described property, basically. 
that's in the PUD. Well, the property uh, dimensions haven't changed. It's what well, it has the, been what from the, the reason why beginning. I was asking is, are, um, is the red barn within this yellow shaded area? Well, if you, you mentioned the red barn. It, it's in the PUD itself, yes. And it's always been there. It's been there for a long time. They used it. Originally, it was proposed <laughs> to have a carriage there so that they could have carriage rides for weddings and stuff was the original proposal for it. And now they're proposing that just one. Well, I guess what I'm used. asking you, Patsy, and obviously you can't see the same thing we're looking at, looking at, but this part that's down in the right. lower right-hand corner does not appear to be in the property that we're dealing with. Is that uh, correct? Park, the parking and then uh, back a ways, there's another, that other structure. Okay. Here's a picture. Yeah, that's, that's not part of the PUD? The goes like this. The, the entire piece was part of the original PUD. The only changes they're making are the areas that we highlighted. They're not making any changes to the professional office building. They're not making any changes to the houses that were built. They're not making any changes. It's, no, it's that's, opening. that's on the west side. I'm talking about on the southeast corner. Well, this piece right here? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's part of the PUD, but it's not being changed. Nothing's changing. Is that not is where that? the red barn is? No, the red barn is right back up here next to the house. Huh? It's one of these buildings down in here. When you walk down in here, there's a red barn right over here in that area. It's been there, okay. for, been there forever. All uh, right. It's uh, two different PUDs? No, it's all one. We were just highlighting the area that was being changed with the different services with that description. There, there's, there is also a plat that goes with this. It was filed back in 2002. It's been amended a couple of times, but uh, I mean, we didn't change the boundaries any at all. So how do you describe the part that's being changed? Well, we're really describing the activities that are changing. That's the only things that are changing is those activities that I just outlined. There's no new buildings to be built. There's nothing like that to be changed. But, but I guess what I'm asking, how do you know the legal description of the part that's being changed. Well, I, I don't know that we have to have a legal description to be changed. Well, you've because got it drawn on our picture. That's what I'm, I don't understand. Okay. I can't answer that for you. Can let you me, help me out, Ernest? Let me go back and see if I can go back one. There. <clears throat> okay. It actually includes all of these pieces right here. The whole piece right here is all in the PUD, including the new houses, the office on the corner, the office that's over here, all this area down here is part of the original PUD. And that's the legal description that's on here. So what's the yellow shaded area in the well, middle there? What's that? This is the um, zoning around it that shows the zoning around it, I think. So you can see it all, there's, there's the zoning all around it. It's all one piece of property. I can't answer for you why that's highlighted because that's the entire piece that's in the PUD that's in this legal description and we're not changing the legal description of the property any at all. You're just changing the activities right. that are right. allowed right. and that's the area where those activities take place. Right. Well I'm not sure I, that, that I'm not sure that's the right answer there. I mean, I, I, it's not that big a deal, I, I get it, but I'm just not sure why that part is shaded and what we were provided and well, not the rest of the PUD. I think the signs were only put in certain areas because that's the only part that was being affected. We didn't put any signs over here on Shiloh because nothing's changing on Shiloh. Yeah, we didn't put any sign signs is. down here. <laughs> yeah. I mean, basically it is a change in the operations of the PUD itself to open it back up like it was originally mm -hmm. uh, approved as a bed and breakfast to add, add the restaurant to add the coffee shop to the, the, the things I just went over open up the gate that they're going to open on on regular times that was built as part of the Greenway I mean it's really not that complicated. So you're saying that part in the southwest or southeast corner that part of the PUD is not being changed? Is that? There's nothing being changed down here. Okay. The parking's going to stay just like it was. That's not changing. The medical office is not changing. The houses in the clinic that are over here is not changing. The changes are in this area right in here. That's where the changes are occurring. Okay. All right. 
I, th I think that's how we do Harbor Meadows is has yes. been amended how many times 20 some odd times and we usually um, just show the part that's being changed yes not I the mean, whole we, thing we, because it's it's humongous we just we just identify the areas that we're changing them yes okay. I move the ordinance be adopted second okay we have a motion and a second are there any other questions before we vote does anyone else need to give input on this okay yes. Now. Yes. Yes. Watson. Yes. Lawson. Yes, ma'am. Flores. Yes, ma'am. Harriman. Yes. Fujiru. Yes. The merch clause will be adopted. Second. Wiggins. Watson. Yes. Lawson. Yes, ma'am. Flores. Yes, ma'am. Harriman. Yes. Fujiru. Yes. Now. Yes. Health you ordinance and emergency clause carry seven zero. Sounds awesome. It, yeah, it <laughs> it, it's a great asset to downtown yeah. Springdale and to the region as a whole. It's going to bring people into downtown Springdale sure. that haven't been here before. And a lot of people that have moved here more recently or just have discovered that part of the Greenway mm -hmm. will uh, will get to see yeah. a property that's really really got great yep. potential. So, hope it's marketed well. I'm sorry. Hope it's marketed well. Well, I think they're working on that part. You know. The biking community kind of markets itself some That's too, true. you know, so. The next item is a revision to a PUD, which is the one out on Watkins and uh, 64th Street. Basically, it is to create a phasing plan so that they can start moving into different buildings as they're opened up. Uh, the original was not submitted with a phasing plan but they have decided they need to move forward with it. What we have reviewed to make sure that the phasing plan, as each one is opened, it meets the fire code, it meets all the requirements, and it'll get to a certain point that the access to 64th Street on the north has to be built before any more buildings can be, can be opened. So this is the only amendment to this one. The mm -hmm. legal description's not changing, the buildings aren't changing, nothing's changing other than we are adding this phasing plan to it, okay? Title uh, Planning Commission recommends approval of this, and the only reason they're back is because they didn't submit a phasing plan when it was submitted. Uh, the title of the ordinance reads an ordinance amending ordinance number 3307, the same being the zoning ordinance of the city of Springfield, Arkansas, on the plat pertaining thereto, by, by rezoning certain lands from plan unit development to revised plan unit development PUD to a, and declaring an emergency. And that, that's all it's doing. Are there any issues on this for like fire access? They have been told how they can go to each phase and when it stops to the point where the second access point has to be opened up before they can open any more buildings. And that was part of the conditions of, and it, it's all written into the PUD document, of how those phases can be opened up. I think it'll go a little bit faster than what they expected. If you go out there, most of the buildings, all the buildings are up. Some of the, uh, a lot of the paving has been done. There's some landscaping that still needs to be done. But as they move forward, they'll start along Watkins and go to the east and go up that strip. And then when they get to the end of that strip, they have to have the access to 64th Street because it, it meets the number of units they have to have to have a second access point. Okay? I'll make a motion that ordinance pass. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second to approve the ordinance. Uh, any other questions or comments? Anyone? Okay, Denise. Watson. Yes. Lawson. Yes, ma'am. Flores. Yes, ma'am. Harriman. Yes. Fujirus. Yes. Powell. Yes. Williams. Yes. Birch clause be adopted. Second. Lawson. Yes, ma'am. Flores. Yes, ma'am. Harriman. Yes. Fujirus. Yes. Powell. Yes. Williams. Yes. Watson? Yes. Both the ordinance emergency clause carry 7 0. The next item is a request to rezone uh, 10 acres located at 3052 and 3744 Wagon, Wagon Wheel Road. The request is to rezone the property from Agricultural District A1 and General Commercial District C2 to Thoroughfare Commercial C5. 
Planning Commission reviewed this request and recommends approval. The title of the ordinance reads, an ordinance amending ordinance number 3307, the same being the zoning ordinance of the city of Springdale, Arkansas, on the plat pertaining thereto by rezoning certain lands from Agricultural District A1 and General Commercial District C2 to Thoroughfare Commercial District C5 and declaring an emergency. Patsy, didn't Wildwood, that used to be a private drive? Am I thinking of the right road? I don't think it's a private drive because it has several. Like carpet one is I think I remember when we made it a public drive, or yeah, I may I think be thinking of another one out there, but when we there's some on the south side that have been okay. made into that are private drives, but okay. this one it has frontage on on Wagonwell Road anyway. It's not right. And right. they probably yeah, will limit their access. Trying to, trying to place where it is, yeah, it's at the intersection of well, you know where carpet one is? That's across the street. It's across Wildwood. Okay to the west of that it's next to that heavy equipment yes. building i think i remember when we that was accepted that as a street that was developed before it was annexed into the city and it's still a one yeah okay mm -hmm. yeah <coughs> what's your pleasure council Any move action? the ordinance pass okay second did I hear a second? Yes. Okay, thank you. Uh, we have a motion and a second to approve the ordinance. Any other questions or comments? Anyone? Okay, Denise. Flores. Yes, ma'am. Perryman. Yes. Fujirus. Yes. Powell. Yes. Williams. Yes. Watson. Yes. Lawson. Yes, ma'am. The merge clause be adopted. Second. Second. Perryman? Yes. Fujirus? Yes. Powell? Yes. Williams? Watson? Yes. Austin? Yes, ma'am. Flores? Yes, ma'am. Both the ordinance emergency clause carry 7 0. The next item is a request for a conditional use for a use unit 25, which is limited manufacturing in a C5 zone located at, the, at 2200 South Old Missouri Road. The Planning Commission uh, reviewed this request and recommends approval of the conditional use. The title of the resolution reads, a resolution approving a conditional use at 2200 South Old Missouri Road is set forth in ordinance number 4030, and it would be a use unit 25 in a C5 zone. Is that that's considered limited manufacturing? Does that mean they're just assembling things there? Or? That's correct. That's what limited manufacturing is. Uh, this piece of property was zoned industrial. It got rezoned back to C5 a couple of years ago, but now they're wanting to move a limited manufacturing back in it. It is a conditional use. This is actually a tea company that just packages kind of tea company? and chips it out. Tea. 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 Uh -huh. Yes. They package tea in different blends and ship it, chips it out from here. Move the resolution be adopted. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second to approve. Any other questions or comments? Anyone? Okay, Denise. Fujirus? Yes. Powell? Yes. Williams? Yes. Watson? Yes. Lawson? Yes, ma'am. Flores? Yes, ma'am. Perryman? Yes. Perry 7 0. The next request is a conditional use for a tandem lot split um, located at 4169 Bel Air Road. <laughs> Uh, the Planning Commission recommends approval of this uh, tandem lot split with the condition that a 25-foot access easement and utility easement from Bel Air Road through Track 1 to Track 2 to the south of Track 1 has to be put into this. I can tell you this property that's being split off will be attached to an adjoining property when the transaction goes through. Planning Commission recommends the approval of the tandem lot. Title of the resolution reads a resolution approving a condition use at 4169 Bel Air Road is set forth in ordinance number 4030. So you said they're going to split it and then attach it to another lot? Is attach that Attach it to another piece of property down here. So they're just cutting off the back of it? Yeah, they're just taking the back off. It'll actually tie into a piece of property that's right down here. 
but it can stand on its own as a separate lot, as a tandem lot split once the uh, access easement is, is established down through there. I'm sorry, I couldn't really hear. What'd you say about the access easement? It's a 25 foot access easement that has to come from Bel Air to the second track. And it will be along the uh, Eastern property line. You said along the Eastern? Uh -huh. So the right side there? Yes. Okay. It's, that's where their existing driveway comes into and it'll be along that same area. Make a motion to approve. Second. Okay, we have a motion to second. Any further comments or questions? Anyone? Okay, Denise. Powell. Yes. Williams. Yes. Watson. Yes. Lawson. Yes, ma'am. Flores. Yes, ma'am. Harriman. Yes. Fujirus. Yes. Harry seven zero. The next, the next item is a request for a waiver of sidewalks in connection with a single family home being built at 728 J Lane. Planning Commission reviewed this request and recommends that the waiver be granted, which would be option one. The title of the resolution reads, a resolution approving a waiver of street improvements, drainage, curb guts and curbs, gutters and sidewalks as set forth in ordinance number 3725 to Miguel and Davin Jimenez in connection with 728 J Lane, a single family dwelling. Move the resolution pass with option one. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Any other comments or questions? Anyone? Okay, Denise. Yes. Watson? Yes. Lawson? Yes, ma'am. Flores? Yes, ma'am. Harriman? Yes. Fujirus? Yes. Howe? Yes. Harry seven zero. All right, uh, Mike Overton, our chairman of our ordinance committee, could not be here tonight. Uh, would someone like to take that, or it's one one ordinance? If not, I'll take it. It's up to y'all. All right, don't everybody jump at once. <laughs> uh, I'll go ahead and read it. Uh, and this came from the ordinance committee with a recommendation for approval. An ordinance accepting two street dedications to the city of Springdale, Arkansas, to declare an emergency and for other purposes. Y'all will remember this is out uh, in the legendary subdivision and a uh, couple of dead end streets there that uh, I'll let Ernest explain it further. This was uh, originally platted. It was gonna be uh, connected to another phase of the project and ended up not being built. So the result was that there's two streets that have no way for a garbage truck or a fire truck to turn around. So the Property Owners Association reached out to the city. Uh, we met with them, I say we, me and the fire chief, representatives from the developer, uh, Roush Coleman, uh, met us out there and agreed that that um, something needed to be done because the curb was getting torn up and the residents were having to endure this. So Roush Coleman has agreed to dedicate these two portions of land uh, to create a turnaround that's acceptable to the fire department and the cost is fairly minimal. It's less than 9,000 to build both of the turnarounds. And the maps, are, the maps attached to the ordinance are slightly different than they were at committee just because these are the exact legal descriptions, whereas before we just had a, a map with a 20-foot square on it. It's the only difference. I'll make a motion that ordinance pass. Did, did we, so, we looked at the price and we moved this is just accepting it into the city and will we vote on the actual work or is it so little of a amount that it's you just it's below a limit and we'll we'll just get the work done okay second let me let me back up on that a minute i'm assuming this is coming out of public works out of a budget line item that's already if not we'll have to come back for a budget amendment okay right okay All right. And we, got a, we, got a, we got a motion, but I don't think we got a second. Okay, thank you. Any other questions or comments? Yeah, it is coming out of Public Works. Is it the budget? Well, I'm, I I got a I got a not for sure. So if it's if if it's something that will require a budget amendment, it's below the it's below the limit that would need to uh, specific council approval. But if it 
if it's going to require a budget amendment, then we'll, we'll need to come back to you all to approve that. Here comes Brad. Maybe he can make something out of that mess I just <laughs> said. Yeah. It comes out of the same line items that will be the road repair after the, the ice storm, the, some of the prep for the overlay district. So, so it's out of going, state turn back that goes to public works. Yeah, and, be and what we'll street. do is we'll evaluate those others and we may have to come back and ask you for some more okay. money for concrete and asphalt. Okay. Thank you, Brad. I think we're ready to vote if no one has any more questions. Okay. Watson? Yes. Austin? Yes, ma'am. Flores? Yes, ma'am. Perryman? Yes. Fujirus? Yes. Powell? Yes. Williams? Yes. It does have an emergency clause just because the sooner we can get this passed, the sooner we can get this problem resolved. But I'll leave it up to the pleasure of the council. May the emergency clause be adopted. Second. Yes, ma'am. Flores? Yes, ma'am. Yes. Yes. Now? Yes. William? Yes. Watson? Yes. Both the ordinance emergency clause carry 7 0. All right, thank you. Uh, Finance Committee Chair Jeff Watson. Jeff? Finance Committee referred one resolution to the council with recommendation. It has to do with the execution of a construction contract for the Spring Creek Trail. The title to the resolution is a resolution authorizing the execution of a construction contract for Spring Creek Trail 090622. And that was forwarded with rec recommendation for approval. Move the resolution pass. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second to approve the resolution. Any other comment or questions? Anyone? Okay, Denise. Flores. Yes, ma'am. Perryman. Yes. Fujirus. Yes. Powell. Yes. Williams. Yes. Watson. Yes. Lawson. Yes, ma'am. Carry 7 0. All right, item 11, Personnel Committee and Chairman Mark Fujirus. Mark? So, during the last committee meeting, uh, the Personnel Committee presented a resolution and authorizing the creation of a new position to replace an, an existing position. Resolution forward to committee without recommendation. And just to comment, because it was presented without recommendation because it was got, it got to us too late and there was just a mix up, mix up on it. So it was giving us time to re review it. Uh, Good evening. Uh, I have a resolution to present to you, a resolution authorizing the creation of a new position to replace an existing position. Uh, as all of you are aware, Rose Lawrence, who has served as the uh, administrative assistant to the mayor, will be retiring after over 20 years. Um, the job description was last updated in 2012, and so we felt like it was time to revise that, uh, come up with other uh, responsibilities and expectations. Uh, we had the job graded uh, by our HR department, and uh, you have uh, in your possession uh, the job description for the mayor's executive assistant. Uh, this will be replacing the administrative assistant position, so that position will go away. Um, if there's any other questions, I can answer those, or Gina can answer those as well. So as soon as this gets approved, or if it does, it'll get posted immediately? So that we yeah. can get it filled as soon as possible? That's correct. We're prepared to post it first thing in the morning. Okay. I move the resolution be adopted. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second to approve the resolution. Any other questions or comments? Will that take any budget amendment? because it's a new grade or anything I don't, like that? I don't think we'll have to do a budget amendment because unless it's, we won't, uh, I don't think we do, Gina, even in, since it's a, well, it's a reduction, really. We think it will be, depending on who we are, well, okay. More money has been a, uh, appropriated in this budget than what this uh, job will currently pay, so it won't require a budget amendment. It won't amendment. require a budget yeah. amendment. Okay, good deal. Any other questions? Comments? Okay, Denise? Perryman? Yes. Fujirus? Yes. Powell? Yes. Williams? Yes. Watson? Yes. 
Lawson? Yes, ma'am. Flores? Yes, ma'am. Carry 7 0. Okay, thank you. Uh, item 12, Parks and Recreation Committee, Chairman Mike Lawson. Mike? Thank you, Mayor. We met last week. We've got one item to move forward. It was recommended for approval. Uh, it was a small change to Rabbit Foot's Lo Rabbit's Foot Lodge. Basically, it was uh, they found some additional work to the tune of about 2,800, and Wyman had left off the authorization for changes, and that's been added in this resolution as well. Resolution reads: in authorizing an execution of a change order for the construction contract for Rabbit's Foot Lodge, Project Number CP 2000. Resolution pass. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second to approve the resolution. Other questions or comments? All right. Uh, Denise? Yes. Now? Yes. Williams? Yes. Watson? Yes. Austin? Yes, ma'am. Flores? Yes, ma'am. Harriman? Yes. Harry 7 0. All right, thank you. Do we have any comments from council members? Looks like we've got a big uh, ribbon cut coming up this weekend. We do. I was debating on whether to bring that up during uh, during Parks and Rec, or or I, I was I knew somebody'd bring it up. So thank you. Um, yeah, big day May first uh, this Saturday. Weather should be great. Looks like we don't yeah. all float away between now and then. <laughs> uh, and there'll be some food trucks out there. There'll be uh, uh, just a, a lot of things for you know. The park's already been busy for a month. Uh, have the soft opening, but but uh, we'll officially open it uh, Saturday morning at 9:30, and the uh, uh, of course milestone is helping us with the uh, with the celebration along with Parks and Rec. Uh, we'll also have the the landscape architect who designed it uh, there. He's coming over, and uh, so it'll be a big day. Also, the station nine fire station nine that's almost completed will also be open if anyone would like to, and we'll have personnel, we'll have fire personnel there uh, from about 9.30 to noon, Chief, somewhere in that time frame. Uh, if anybody, if any of our residents would like to also tour the fire station, so. Yep. What about, any other comments from council? So, oh. Mayor, um, I wonder, I'm wondering if we need to kind of renew our emphasis on graffiti removal seems like I've noticed, and maybe it's because the weather's getting warmer, but it seems like I've noticed that happening again. I, and one specific instance I'll bring up is, you know that, I think maybe it used to be a bar or something there on Thompson, close to Brahms and close to, yeah. it's kind of a vacant, look, vacant looking building now. It had graffiti. That one that was painted blue? bright blue no it's next to that i think or okay. maybe a couple of doors down okay it's, it looks vacant one okay. by the cleaners yes right next to the cleaners okay james um i know when i when i see graffiti i i take a picture of it and shoot it to james and i usually copy the pd on it because they like to at least see the pictures if they can't get out and investigate it so i'd encourage anyone to do that mm -hmm. and i don't know james how how many times a week does your trailer get out Okay, at least three days a week. If, if, if we get behind on that, we may need to step it up to four or five days a week. Yeah, if, if that we will. Yeah, because I know we like to get it off as quickly as possible, but, but everybody can help us out too. I'm kind of glad I'm getting to say this for uh, folks that may be watching. Uh, if, you, if you see graffiti, uh, let us know so we can get it reported because uh, sometimes people see that and just assume, well, they'll, somebody will take care of it but it sometimes we don't always see it so uh, what about, um, yeah. there's a there's a building close to my home and it had graffiti on it and it looks like the owner of the building maybe just painted over with white even though it's on a like a red brick so does that constitute as something that needs to be cleaned up or, or that could have been us <laughs> that just painted on the yeah over uh, it but we you know We'd, we'd prefer, we can do so much, but we'd prefer always that the, if I were a property owner and I got tagged, I'd probably want to take care of it myself, but you need to take care of it quickly. And, and what we did, you know, we changed, when we, when we uh, bought the equipment and started a, our own graffiti removal, we did that 
to help our residents so we didn't hold them have to hold them responsible for cleaning that but we can't have every color we can't have every uh, the, our, our main goal is to get the graffiti covered where people can't read it and uh, uh, I, I I would like to suggest James that we maybe carry more than one or two colors and get get as close as we can I mean without without having to go to Lowe's every time we you know we need to cover graffiti uh, and I know that we try and power wash it when we can when when that works so but uh, I think we can do a little better with that because I, so, I see that too so mayor if I'm out riding my bike and see it I take a picture of it and send it to who to James you can send it to James and uh, or you can, I'll send it to James if, if somebody doesn't have James's but of course you got your email if you work for the city of Springdale it's easy to know what your email is that's right so uh, yeah just do that and then James James can make sure the police see it and all that just okay. send it to James any other questions or comments from the council I'd, I'd like to also just uh, reiterate what a ceremony we had Sunday with a safe haven baby box and if those who are listening and watching online were not aware that it's uh, at station six our fire station six on 48 and uh, it was a great great ceremony uh, a great opening and uh, I really commend this council and this administration for uh, for that to happen and Amelia did a lot of work on this and really want to appreciate her for that that works so. that was uh, you know I, I I said at the at the ceremony that that was uh, I stressed that, that was unanimous support by the council absolutely we we're very thankful for that and I know that was well received there were a few of you that didn't get uh, I, I appreciate what Amelia did we probably should have sent something out from our office too and we didn't and uh, we're I was telling somebody earlier we, you know we went a year without having any ribbon cuttings or anything and we we've, we've had some changes in our office since then and that was one that fell through the cracks so we're going to do a lot better on that to make sure that, that comes from my office also and uh, so I apologize if some of y'all didn't get that or got it too late uh, but we'll we're, we're going to rectify that um, any department heads no uh, city attorney no sir I have nothing. We have a motion to adjourn. Motion. All right, thank you. We're adjourned.